And South Florida with the basketball to start. I feel badly South Florida, no mention in the open, but the reality is this South Florida, Memphis is the story, but this South Florida team. He scored 19 in a row down the stretch for USF. He also blocked five shots and he had five steals. And right now his team on a Chris Youngblood jumper. I think in the game today, it takes some time to figure out how you can be impactful. And some guys, you got to be impactful with the energy and that's something Pryor can do. But if Javon Quinterly is going to have that much room to operate, it's weird being here with this place not rocking. It really is. And, and yes, outside, it's been tough. There's a pull-up three. Youngblood sticks it. He's got five, and South Florida's hit its first three shots. Chris Youngblood, 15 a game to lead USF, and here's Quinterly again. He creates the space, and he scores at the rim. It is good to explore ball screen options early in the offense. Memphis is leading score as the rebound and feeds Quinterly. Who misses from three, but Jones cleans it up. And that transition three, I absolutely love it when you have number. I think he thought he was going to have more help. The three players to come over for Kennesaw State with Amir Abdul-Rahim and Hardaway. Stops three out of bounds. Ten to shoot for USF when we return. Still lead it by one. Look, the Bulls have been aggressive to start. I give them all the credit in the world, but I'm waiting at some point. Around his screen, this is Selton Miguel as it knocked away. The freshman Sharon Font making a play defensively. Hardaway's layup not close. Tomlin's there to clean up the mess. They scored over 100 in its last two games. First time they've done that since December 1986. Good shot fake Hardaway. Fouled on a three, and he banks it in. I think Nick Jordan's going to be real important for this group. He allows them to play small. When they get that group in there to start to pick up the pace, but when Malcolm Dandridge can be effective. Selt Miguel set up with a screen. Miguel around and out for three. Hines, a good offensive rebounder, has it. Another good look, and Miguel finally gets South Florida back on the board. That's one of the scramble-type defenses that you've got to adjust to if you're Memphis, right? If, if Dandridge is going to go out, scramble to contest, everybody else has to pick up rebounding. David Jones answers. Quinterly runs for Memphis. Jones into the corner. This is Hardaway. On the drive, a dump for Dandridge, who missed it, who followed it. Tomlin's follow is there. Everybody touched the ball on that possession for Memphis. Around and out again, and here comes Quinterly, and when the eyes are up for Memphis, it's a dangerous thing. Tomlin wraps it in. Amir Abdul-Rahim needs a timeout. Miguel thought about a three, yeah, floated it in the corner instead. Hines, and he rattles home a two. Sam Hines Jr., six and a half point per game scored. Jordan Walton back on the floor for Memphis. Chaz at starting five out there. Dandridge is a big size advantage on Walker and just plays bully ball. It's the culmination of a lot of things. And to live through that with a kid, I think we underestimate that. We don't get to do that as broadcasters. I, I envy that. David Jones fights through traffic, and Jones, and then he had a mere 19 in their 112-86 demolition of Wichita State. Here he is again, right-handed this time. Oh, goodness! A big top-level three-point opportunity. Miguel and Youngblood, their big scores. Reed throws it away. Naquan Tomlin for Memphis. They have been lethal in transition so far. And three more from Jones single-handedly outscoring South Florida. Seven to shoot for Pryor. Kaysen Pryor knocks in his fifth three of the year. Jones again. Got his defender Stroud in the air. Got his own miss back. Jones, about a hundred different shot fakes and he finally gets it to go. That is patience in the eye of a storm. He's got the last 13 for Memphis, 18 in the game for Jones. Pryor over Jones, tough two, and Pryor gets the balance, and then he gives himself a little N1 celebration. Free throw shooter. That's like the idea of a makeup call. No, there's no such thing as a makeup call. Yeah, there is. Yeah, of course there is. Tomlin inside. That's too easy for Naquan Tomlin. I do think South Florida has struggled to get to the free throw line because they need to do more of this, just attack matchups, as opposed to trying to figure out the switch. And another Memphis offensive rebound. Good find by Walton. Aston Hardaway, no from three. Tomlin gets position, up and under again. Sharon Fott's two for two. 
Memphis's largest halftime lead this season has been 14. They're up right now by 15 as Miguel hits a three. It has been a really impressive first half. But in terms of scoring, if they can do that consistently, you're just going to chase them the entire game. Off the young blood, Miss Hardaway has been shot happy today and drills his second three. Well, they had numbers. Hines went down and shoot it with confidence. Miguel, line drives in a two. Selden Miguel with eight points off the bench. The disruption, the chaos, everything we talk about within this program. So you just need time on the floor. Pryor, get around Jordan. Jordan does well to alter the path of that shot. This is Miguel creating space with a dribble and drilling at three. Nice end of the half for him. And Hardaway's heave nearly hits the jumbotron. It is still the largest halftime lead. Memphis has that ability, but they have to be able to turn it up and just bury an opponent. You get Javon Quinterly a good oh, look oh. out of the half. Good screen by Dandridge, who loves it. Tigers in transition again. Nick Jordan runs the floor, has it knocked away. And it will stay with Memphis. Not a lot of teams play their best defense from behind. Memphis does it really well. Young blood off a of curl, knocked away by Jordan. Here comes Memphis on the run. Quinterly, Jordan. There's the throwdown. By a high flying Kobe Knox. Pryor's open in the corner, wants another opportunity, and hits his second three of the game. The key is developing some better instincts to avoid getting yourself into foul trouble constantly. Jordan way up in the air. Pryor shuffling the feet, got it out for three to Kobe Knox, and South Florida's within 14. Then they can set pressure and start to dictate the game a little bit more. Three. Out for Stroud at three. That's a big one. Three straight threes for South Florida, and here come the Bulls. You play Memphis and you play FAU, you're playing with house money. Winterly floats it, Dandridge with another Memphis offensive rebound. Malcolm Dandridge puts it back in. Back from 12 down in the second half to win. They're trying to come back from 15 down in the second half tonight. Quinterly gets around Pryor, and it's a pretty finish for Javon Quinterly. Brings the ball up Pryor, who calls himself a 6'10 guard. He has the size here on Jaden Hardaway. One on one of the paint. Pryor too strong. Offensive rebound is there and put back by Brandon Stroud. For the 10th ranked team of the country, Memphis, winners of 10 straight. Jones crosses over, gets to the rim and scores his first point to the second half. It's a lot of room, 15 to 33. Miguel. And around Tough. Jones, Miguel answers. Both 13 teams. points for him. Stroud, backdoor cut, Reed swings it. Youngblood, Pryor, Miguel. It ends in a three. It really deserved to end in a three. And for the first time in a long time, Reed with a burst. Got to the paint, drew two defenders. That leaves Youngblood open. Fakes the three, hits the two. It's a six-point game. It gives you rhythm into shots. You make a higher percentage. But on the other end, Memphis struggling against the zone. They've done a good job keeping Memphis out of transition. Good job attacking the offensive glass. Great second chance opportunities. Stroud get around Dandridge, and Stroud finishes at the rim. It's a 9-0 run. This zone has really slowed Memphis down. I mean, really having to think, be calculated, where the ball goes, where you can attack. Just hasn't been much there. Deep one, Quinterly. It's big. It. It's big. Now you need rebounds and runouts if you're Memphis, but South Florida, again, capitalizing on space. Reed got up in the air. Miguel with a deep one. Man. Answers for South Florida. Five for nine from three. Very well for USF. Now Pryor will operate. Five to shoot. Reed, hot puts it down to Hines, leans in, and Dandridge walls up. Really stagnant offensively this half. Jones. Isolated with Pryor, steps inside him and scores beautifully with the off hand. And almost like with those Euro steps, the slower you go, the more options you have. Reed swatted away. Tomlin's got Young on the leak out. Miguel back to defend. And Young will shoot two. A cut it to just three a few moments ago here in the second half. Can they get a bucket from wow. Miguel? They sure wow. can. He's been the bucket getter. 21 points, that ties the season high. Seven to shoot now for Walton. Crowds 
making sure they know it. Jordan misses a three. Rebound to Chris Youngblood. Up ahead, Miguel got behind the defense and scores inside of Jordan. What a comeback by South Florida. Can they find the finishing touch? Quinterly, he is the closer for Memphis, and he banks in two. You may remember Cincinnati losing to Eric Musselman's Nevada in the NCAA tournament. South Florida trying to do it on the road against top 10 Memphis, and they're within one off the jumper from Youngblood. Lasser will guard Jaquan Walton, who has not scored after a 23-point Sunday. Walton's going to drive in anyway, get to the right hand, and what a time for your first basket. Uh, Jordan defended him well. Deep in the shot clock, it's Reed. It's still Reed. Left-handed, he ties it. The first tie of the game, and it's Jaden Reed's first points of the game.